Saul, you know, when he was sought, you know, Saul, when he was sought, you know, and, and when you go to Samuel, the book of Kings, when you read, it, read the story of Saul, when Saul was sought, in the early days, he was such a humble guy that even when, when the prophet anointed him, you know, when Samuel anointed Saul and was actually looking for Saul, Saul was hiding. And, and when he was anointed, his statement was, I am the least in my father's home. And my family is a poor family. He said the same thing that was said by Gideon. So at a stage, Saul was, was such a humble guy. You know, but something went wrong. Something went wrong. And he was anointed by God. He was God's choice. And if you look at him, God used him mightily. He did incredible things. The problem is things went wrong with time. So you can start out being anointed. But as, if you don't guard your heart against certain things, it can be a problem. So you know, when you read the story of Saul, and I'm reading, this guy should have, should have carried that attitude of humility. When he started, you know, he was humble. He didn't make himself a big deal. But as he went on, he became so important. To an extent that when he wanted to go to war at some stage, he was waiting for the prophet to come and offer the sacrifice. But now that he's a big guy, he was hectic. He didn't have time. So he decides to do what he was not supposed to do, to offer sacrifices. One of the things God never allows in his word is for us to cross offices. Yeah. You'll see in the Old Testament, I mean, there was a time when the ark of God was brought back to Israel. And it was carried, uh, it was carried on a cart that was pulled by donkeys. And the cart went over a, a stone. And, and as it went over a stone, the ark was about to fall. And the people who had seen the ark, one of them, all he did was to just try to steady the ark that it mustn't fall. And he died. Because he was out of office. Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 he wasn't supposed to do that. And so when you read the Old Testament, you'll, you'll see things there that prove. So if you don't read the Old Testament, you know, we will take a lot of people cross offices. People call themselves by what they're not. You know, people assume roles they're not supposed to assume. You know? So you see now, and people don't realize why things don't work. Are you there, Basalon? The, f the first time the word covenant is used in the Bible is in Genesis 6. I'm saying the word covenant. Covenant was practiced before that, but the word covenant was used, and that's Genesis 6, 18, where God says to Abram, and it's important to say Abram, not Abraham, I will establish my covenant with you, I mean to Noah rather, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you and your sons, your wife and your sons' wives. So we said the word covenant in Hebrew is the word berith. And that word berith gives the sense of cutting or a cutting that causes blood to flow. It also means a compact. All right? Because a compact is made by passing between two pieces of flesh. So the Hebrew word berith from the Old Testament word is when it's translated, it means to cut where blood flows. So, you know, so when you hear the word covenant, you don't, you know, it's, and God says, I will make a covenant. R right for you to read, I will cut a covenant. And the word covenant means we will cut where blood flows. In other words, it will be a cutting that will cause blood to flow. Now, I'm going to talk to you today about the importance of blood. I touched on it yesterday. I want to touch on it much more uh, at length today. And you'll understand why blood is so important. All right? 